I said to you earlier that stepping into an Aboriginal world, the more you step into it, the more you get drawn into it. And that's a very real principle for them. And they start to recognise in you the respect that you are according them. When I work with Aboriginal people, I try as best I am able to think as an Aboriginal. In every dealing, I try to think in an Aboriginal way. And what happens then is that when we're filming, particularly the cameras may be over there filming something, I'll get a little tug on my shirt sleeve, and a man will come over, or a woman, you see, you see that rock? And then they tell me about a sacred site, and one of the stories of the ancestors, and tell me something else that helps me to understand their world. And sometimes the things they're telling me are in direct relationship to conversations they've heard going on in our camp. It's very interesting, and you get drawn more into their world, and they share things with you, and you start little by little to get a better, deeper understanding of their perspective. Aboriginal people are fascinating. They don't think in the three dimensions that you and I think in. This is a multi-dimensional world in terms of time, space and relationship. It's very difficult to understand. And it's very beautiful. It's a beautiful view of the world. In other parts of the world, tribes people are finding ways to move into the modern world without losing their traditional culture. One of the most successful people in this regard have been the Maasai, who are of course herds people. The disaster bringing them to Britain because they believe that all cows on the planet belong to them. So any cattle farmers here in the audience would be in trouble. But um, they have a thing they call the old pool. And the old pool, the nearest thing we have to it is a scout camp. But the old pool is very important. It's a place where men are taken at a very young age by their elders and taught all the things they need to know about life. How to find soap in the bush. How to make fire. Where to find medicine. How to make string. What to do if they're charged by a buffalo. What to do if they're charged by an elephant. All of the things of life are imparted at the old pool. And throughout their life, at whatever age they're at, there is a time when they will go to the old pool to receive the wisdom of those who moved on the path of life ahead of them. And this principle is very much alive. And if they don't go to the old pool and be, go through their initiations at various ages in their life, they can't marry and move forwards in their, in their society. And for that reason, you will find Maasai who are able to drive and use modern tools and live as, as we do, but they still retain their culture. I think that's a very important thing. And it needs to be supported wherever possible. One of the things that uh, concerns me isn't just global warming and pollution, things that we've, we've discussed and talked about, but perhaps the thing that worries me most of all is something that's happening now as I speak to you that we don't really perceive. We can sense global warming. Maybe we talk to a grandparent and they say, oh, it's a bit different to how it was when I was a child. And the, uh, the climatologist can give us all the facts and figures. And pollution, well, we see people struggling with asthma. We see cancer on the increase, all of these problems, you know. But one of the things that really bothers me is the concept of extinction. In our lifetime, right now, the planet is facing the most dramatic extinction of species since the dinosaurs disappeared. It's astonishing. It's been estimated that perhaps in as little as 65 years, half the mammals on the planet could be extinct if the rate of loss continues as it is now. That is staggering. And it's believed that we, our species, is the cause. I find that shocking. I've seen efforts to protect animals. 
This is in Salvo in Kenya. An elephant with tusks. But there are still people who believe that that tusk, the ivory, is so important that they would kill the animal. Here I've worked with tracking teams using traditional skills to try and protect the animals. A very dangerous job. It's a, it's a really dangerous job. Many of these men are shot. The people who shoot the elephants don't care. They carry Kalashnikovs and away they go. And this is some of the ivory that was recovered. One of these patrols, in a one month period, sorry, one week period, recovered 9,000 snares from a national park. It's astonishing pressures on some of the wildlife. It's been estimated that in the 1930s, when billiard balls were made from ivory, Britain alone produced per year 500,000 billiard balls. You get, far, you get four billiard balls from one tusk. You can do the sums. It's staggering, isn't it? It's those little drips, drip, 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 the effects of human action that has a profound effect on these places. Three weeks ago, I was filming in Idaho. I was asked to go and track wolves for, for a program you'll see next year. It's a fascinating story. It's a fascinating story. In 1995, there were no wolves in Idaho. And then an American Indian tribe called the Nez Perce decided that they would bring about the reintroduction of wolves into Idaho. And they brought 35 wolves from Canada and literally let them go. Three weeks ago, there were 850 wolves wild in Idaho. Isn't that amazing? Tremendous success story. And you think, well, what problems does that cause? Well, there are sheep herders, and the sheep herders lose sheep to wolves, as they always have throughout history. And I went to talk to sheep herders, and the sheep herders were cool about it. They said, there's no problem. We, um, we're learning to deal with them. We've got methods to protect ourselves and our herds from the wolf. The day I left, the wolf came off the endangered species list and in the coming year they will be hunted for seven months of the year with the aim to reduce the population by half. For what reason? They are causing no problem. Simply because people want to kill them. They aren't the vicious animal that you're led to believe. But they are an animal that we seem unable to live alongside. And I find that very sad. To me, what is a measure of civilization? Civilization is learning to respect the other creatures around us that we share our lifetime on this planet with and learning to live together. That's not to say that we don't necessarily have to control things. We often do. But to hate something, in my mind, is irrational.